Hello there. Sorry from 17 once again. As you can see from our dive kicking Gravity Insanity, this is Gravity Days, and this is episode 5, A Meeting with Destiny. I'm making a walkthrough to it, and you might be wondering why I chose to do this. Well, I think this game is incredibly fun, and I just want it on the channel. If I can make somebody buy this game and experience something they might not necessarily have gone near, and if they enjoy it, then my my work is done, because I love games, I do. Some games I hate, some games I hate with the, the vitriol that you reserve from your nemesis, but that's just kind of, it's easy to hate a game I think, especially if it's not your tastes. But a game that can really elicit joy from you and you can have a ton of fun with it, now that is something that I think is, is worth sharing, and that's why I'm covering it, even if this game is not the most challenging you'll ever come across, but it's still worthwhile. And I would recommend renting this over buying it, because I don't know if this is a game that everyone's going to be able to play a ton. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to replay this game too much. I'm, I'm enjoying it on my second playthrough, but you know I don't know if I would do a third or a fourth. But even then, I don't regret buying it, and I'm glad I own it, because I know at some point I'll probably go back to try it out and have a ton of fun again. Because there's just there's something about experiencing you know, an interesting gravity mechanic with some platforming and some, some combat and just some goofy stuff happening. And I think I know why it resonated so much with me as we pick up these pair of underpants that are hanging on this roof, or the shorts. It's because there's been so many sequels recently, there's been so many remakes, you know, so many remasters, and this in itself is a remaster. So I'm not giving it, you know, I'm not laying it off for that, but it's a game I never played and it's a game I would have never got to play either. So to me, it feels like a remaster that was worth it, because it's of a title that, unless you own a very niche console, you're never going to go near it, as opposed to Gears of War 1, again! Like, such a difference, and it's, it's a completely different mindset for me when I come into something that... I had no idea what this game was, I just thought it looked interesting and weird, and it is interesting and weird. And the fact that I liked it just really compounds it into something that is going to really stick with me. Even though I don't think that it's the most amazing game, I don't think it does anything all that new. It's just fun. And I'm really happy to, to be able to say that. Really happy. Because what has there been that's come out this year as we carry this lost father to his lost child? We've had Resident Evil Zero, which was a great game, but I played it when I was like 10. You know, I played it many, many years ago, so it's not new at all. Then there's been, what, anything? Firewatch? Firewatch was a great game. You know, it was a nice two hours of your life, but you're not going to play it religiously, are you? Because you can't, unless you're somehow obsessed with navigation and orienteering, which I, I can't really imagine you'd be playing video games for that. I imagine you'd be in a wood with a compass somewhere. So aside from those two examples of something that I've personally covered, there's not really been that much for me to, to get excited about in this early year. And that's obviously going to change. But I think that's why this uh, was able to, to affect me so much, just because of the absence of the ability to be like, wow, this is a cool game and a new game and something I've not experienced and I'm getting to experience it. And this is interesting too, this game has mild shmup elements as these enemies fire quite a few of those Ikaruga bullets at you. But it's nothing too crazy just yet. And you can roll and get your iframes or you can jump them, it's entirely up to you. This, this is a good example of how this game mixes up its environments and goes from being quite mundane to being quite just out of this world and not entirely too sure what's going on. It, it does it quite a lot and I think it's one of the game's strengths. Watch this too. I heard something fire and I had a feeling it was coming for me so I jumped when I got control back there and I dodged it and it looked super pro but uh, it was quite fortunate. The only issue I have with these particular missions is they go so quick I can't really talk too much about the game. <laughs> you know, I tell you that I like it and then the video's over. But thank you for watching and you take care now.